To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Have you ever felt stuck? Either stuck in your business or stuck in your life, but you feel like you're not making any progress. It's really important to learn how to get unstuck. And you know the old saying that when one door closes, another door opens. That's actually very true. And today's guest is going to give us her process for how to close the chapter on what doesn't serve you and keeps you stuck so you can open the door to new possibilities. I'm speaking with Kristen Dale Boyce. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She owns a private counseling practice, Pathways to Healing Counseling, and she is the host of the Close the Chapter podcast. She is a speaker, a workshop presenter, business owner, and inspirational influencer. Before she entered the counseling field, Kristen was an executive at a Fortune 500 company, and we are really, really grateful to have her on Rebelpreneur Radio today. Kristen, welcome. Thank you so much, Ralph, for having me. I feel like I'm ready to hit the ground running with your intro. I love it. So I'm very excited to be here. So thank you so, so much. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us. And I know that you are ready to hit the ground running because you specialize in helping people to improve their self-worth, to help couples and families resolve conflicts and develop powerful communication skills, among other things. Tell us a little bit about how you got interested in this. Tell us about that journey from being a Fortune 500 executive to being a counselor who helps people to get through the things that are holding them back? I love that question. I think it started very young. My mother was a psychotherapist, so I grew up being psychoanalyzed (laughs) often in our home. And I knew at some point that I'd love to help. I have a keen curiosity for people, what motivates them, what inspires them, how do they function? How do they show up? So I've always been on the journey, a quest, if you will, to understand the human psyche and how humans kind of evolve in their lives. So when I was in the Fortune 500 company that I was in, I was the office that people would come in, shut the door and say, I'm stuck. I I can't. (laughs) It could be I can't stand it here. I don't know where I'm going in my life. And so I ended up just really helping people figure out what do they want to do? Why do they feel stuck? How do they feel stuck? And helping them develop kind of a plan to get through it. And that experience has helped transcend me working with clients. So I really help, I feel like that experience in the Fortune 500 industry, the company and the industry helped me learn what it's like to be on the other side of running a company and the bureaucracy that can happen in the workplace and how to be an engaging, vulnerable leader. And I think that really makes a difference. That that experience has made a difference. And that's kind of how I got to where I am. I went into I worked for the Fortune 500 company. That CEO asked me to go into the next company that he bought, which was a consulting company. And I ran the marketing there. And during that time, I said, you know what? There's something more here for me to help people on a deeper level make sustainable change. And so I went back, got my master's, and then um, after that, opened a private practice. And here I am. We have 11 therapists and work on a deep, much deeper level to help people work through pain and things they might have avoided in their life to have freedom and joy. Hmm, I love that. That's really the journey I've been on. Yeah. What a powerful journey. What was that like transitioning from a fortune 500 environment to actually creating a business around your passion for helping people? Was that, was that, challenging? Was it scary? How did you feel in that transition? 
It's that's I love that question because I think what holds a lot of people back is the fear. So it was a knowing I had a knowing that it was time, time for me to move on, time for me to expand. And so I felt less scared in that transition than I've had in other transitions because I felt like I got the foundation of systems and processes on how to start a company. And it was kind of figuring it out as I went. It it was one of those things where you just go, okay. I am going to kind of, I don't have to, if I fail at it, I'm okay with it. And I think that was one of the key factors in me taking the risk is being okay that let's say it didn't go, that I would just figure out another plan B and have another job, figure out and hopefully have another job. (laughs) So I was okay with failing. I think that was a big piece of the mindset that I had. I think that's really important Um, in, in a lot of, A lot of people, I feel like fear is probably the biggest thing that holds people back. And then, of course, the fear of failing. But if you can set that aside and just say, you know what, it's not the end of the world. It's just if I don't get it done this way, then there's got to be a different way for me to approach it. I think that's a that's a valuable way of looking at business and at life. And you've kind of incorporated that into your branding pathways to healing. Counseling is very descriptive of what you do. Explain to us. The name behind your podcast, Close the Chapter Podcast, What what is the significance of that to you and, and to the people that you're working with? I think people don't know how to get unstuck or how to close the chapter on something that doesn't serve them. So it could be something from their past. Uh, it could be a trauma they experienced. It could be an unhealthy relationship. It could be a work environment they feel stuck in. They don't know how to close the chapter, but they want to. And so that really was the brainstorm on how do you close the chapter on what doesn't serve you and open the door to freedom and joy and possibility. And when you don't, when you feel trapped, you feel there, like there's no other option. You don't know how to get unstuck. You don't know how to close the chapter. And it seems like there's so many life transitions that we have as humans that we go through. And sometimes we get stuck in one of the chapters from the past. Mm. And that's really kind of how it evolved. It's how do I transition through these basic human development events in our life, life experiences And oftentimes what I see is someone's kind of frozen in time based on maybe something they experienced and they didn't get to fully process the thoughts, feelings, emotions, body sensations. So they're really stuck at a certain age or event that happened to them. So this is about closing that chapter, working through it, not stuffing it, not numbing it. It's actually reprocessing those thoughts, feelings that didn't get processed so they can move through it and get to the other side of it and start a new chapter. I really love that metaphor as an author. You know, when you're writing a book, when you come to the end of a chapter, it's either the end of the story or it's the beginning of a new chapter. And what I hear you saying is just because you're in a story and you've been in a story for a long time and you feel like you're stuck in that chapter. Maybe it's time to close that chapter, but just because it's the ending of the chapter doesn't mean that your story is over or that you are finished. There's another chapter coming in your life. So I really love how you have described that uh, so visually for us and in the people that you're working with. It leads me to the next big question. Uh, All of these changes and transitions and things that we are experiencing in our life and in our business. Um, Some people, it seems like they are very resilient and they seem to slide through the setbacks of life. And others, it seems like they really take a, a much longer time to process and to figure things out. And then they, they get in that situation where they feel stuck and unable to move forward. In your experience, what's the biggest problem or the greatest challenge you see with helping people to close that chapter and move on with their lives? Oh, I love this question. I think that 
there are defense mechanisms that we have been conditioned to, in order to survive something or, or in order to function or get through it, that we learn that then no longer become adaptive. They're really maladaptive. For example, avoidance. So someone um, wants to avoid ta- having a tough conversation because they're afraid of rejection, abandonment, or failure, whatever that is. And that prevents them from growing and evolving because that fear, um, we, we have a hard time tolerating that. We have a hard time tolerating some of these emotions. And so the repeated condition patterns, we might have learned to survive something, get through what the hard or challenging experience no longer then works as life progresses. So as you, as you have more evolved issues, especially running a business and maybe in some of your relationships, not you, but people in general have kind of avoided that tends to then not work so well in creating a healthy system in a business or running the business well if we avoid difficult conversations, for example. So I think what keeps people stuck and less resilient is their defense mechanisms that they've learned. Some of those are um, shutting down, withdrawal, withdrawing from circumstances. It might be criticism. It might be judgment. It, th- there's a numbing, so kind of really stuffing down what they feel, again, which is a form of avoidance. I think when we can face the fear, when we can face um, whatever is is in front of us and say, I can handle that instead of, I can't tolerate that. I can't stand that. I can't handle that. That is really what keeps people stuck is that mindset. Like I can't deal with it instead of, I can do this, take a deep breath. I can handle this and facing it in a healthy way. Interesting. So it, it, it sounds like everything is flowing out of Avoidance, or a lot of it is flowing out of avoidance. Criticism is uh, projecting my judgments onto other people as a way to avoid being judged myself. Uh, shutting down is a way to avoid having to deal with something. Lashing out, same thing. So it seems like avoidance is a huge defense mechanism that does the opposite of what we need to do, which is to really, I don't want to say confront because that has a negative connotation. I don't like confrontation. Most people don't, but I guess it's addressing things that need to be addressed as opposed to avoiding them. Is, is Would that be a fair way to put it? That is a wonderful way to put it. And that means of people avoid their internal thoughts, their internal feelings, and they aren't connected to that insight of, huh, why was I triggered when that person said that? Or why, why did I have that intense reaction when that client or customer got upset with me or because no one likes to be upset with any, get upset with anyways, but it's having that insight. And when we avoid, we're missing that opportunity to really dive in and have more awareness in order to be able to face it and move through it. So is there a reason why we get triggered, whether it's criticism and, and, or losing our temper, blowing up, uh, reacting badly to something. Is, is there is this a, a trigger that we can learn to recognize? And does it always tie into something else that's going on? And, and we're not even aware of it. It's it's subconscious, but it's a it's a it, let me hypothesize that it is an unresolved issue in a chapter that we haven't closed yet. That is exactly what it is. So when we have an intense reaction or it it, it can feel so subtle, it can feel like fear just creeped up. Now I'm afraid of rejection. I'm afraid that person doesn't like me. And it's in those triggers are typically tied to a chapter that has not been closed or needs to be nurtured. It needs to be looked at. It needs to be tended to because if we don't, we're going to repeat that. That's going to keep coming up and coming up and coming up. And we want to be able to say, I can handle this because I know that's my fear. And that's linked to whatever that's linked to having that. It could be something from childhood. It could be something in third grade. Someone said something to you. 
we have more insight and that's empowerment. Now I can do something about that versus I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I'm and moving away from it or numbing it in some way or avoiding it, leaning in and diving in to get explore and get curious, not to judge it, but to get curious allows us to close the chapter without getting curious. Very difficult to close a chapter or get unstuck. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. And I could also see how avoidance becomes a habit. It becomes a way to save face. It becomes a way for us to not do the difficult work of figuring out what's going on. And we can even avoid the necessary work of figuring out why am I avoiding things? Why am I triggered here? Well, it's an unresolved issue. Well, it's the past is too painful. We start making excuses. You know, the, I don't want to go back over the past. It's too painful. And so we end up avoiding the very thing that's going to help us move forward and, and get unstuck. So I, I really think that you have done a great job, Kristen, of nailing down exactly what the problem is. And probably 99% of the situations, we're trying to avoid something that we need to deal with so that we can move on. That brings me to the next question. How do we get unstuck? Specifically, how do we get out of this mindset of avoidance and really address the things that need to be addressed so that we can move forward? So the first thing in order to start closing chapters is one, the first thing to change period or healing something that needs to be tended to avoidance pain, fear. What we want to do is we want to move away from the pain. The first thing we have to do is build some awareness when we're triggered, when we have fear pop up, when we have our defense mechanisms that we've built up over time. Start getting curious, start getting aware, start noticing without judgment. Because we want to put things in boxes, right, wrong, good, bad, all, nothing. And what that does is send us into shame, saying there's something wrong with me, I'm defective, and it shuts us down as opposed to saying, I can handle this, breathe through this, it's not right or wrong, I'm just noticing. And do I like how that feels when I get defensive? Do I like how that feels when the my relationships are suffering? or my work environment it, that I'm creating with my team is disgruntled and I'm, I'm avoiding having these, do I, do I like how that feels? So first is the awareness. Second is starting to rumble through the emotion. This is where people get kind of stuck. We have, I don't know if you've seen the movie inside out from Disney. I it's a cheat so. sheet. Okay. They did a beautiful job. It's based on neuroscience and they've identified five core emotions. There's really seven, but the movie focuses on five that are universal for everybody that we've kind of been conditioned out of, or we simply only like a few of these. And they are anger, fear, sadness, disgust, and joy. Hmm. And so I encourage people to start saying, what am I feeling? What is the core emotion? And you get a cheat sheet of five. Start identifying one of the five. What is it? One of those five. Try them on and see how that feels. Typically, what I'd see often is fear is number one. Unresolved sadness is number two. Interesting. Unresolved sadness is definitely number two. So then I say, okay, what I'm inviting you to do is notice how you feel that in your body. So the third step is notice your body sensations because we have a lot of our body will shut us down if we're not connected and we're avoiding. The body will start telling us, wake up, wake up. This is not working. <laughs> so notice your body sensations. And people are very disconnected from their bodies oftentimes. That's a survival mechanism. And the last piece is writing it out to get it out. Oftentimes what I call is looping thoughts. They just are thoughts that keep us up at night. It's like a hamster on a wheel. We can't seem to get connected to, we can't get past it. It just keeps, we're ruminating, we're, we're, we're on the, we're looping. And so getting it out, writing it out helps us so it doesn't stay in the body. It doesn't keep going and going. So those are quick tips. 
And then of course, if you feel more stuck, if you feel stuck and you still feel like I need more help, I always recommend a therapist or a coach that can help you unpack some of the deeper pieces that might need to be tended to that didn't get tended to. Wow. That's, that's really powerful. And that's really very, uh, very practical. I could see how this is a much better response as opposed to avoiding or just giving into whatever is trigger triggering us. Um, it, it does raise an interesting question. What if, and how do you deal with, um, people who, seem to trigger you over and over again, and they seem to be doing it intentionally. For example, a toxic person or a person who is constantly uh, negative or critical of you and the things that you're trying to accomplish. Um, I, I think it's healthy to, to learn how to deal with this on on the inside because you can't control what someone else does. You can always control your response, but you can't control what's going on with that other people with other people, but it are, is there, is there a way to deal with that? Is, is that a valid thing that we also should consider if we keep getting triggered by the same people or, or the same situations over and over again? Yes, absolutely. A thousand percent. Yes. Because there are some toxic I, and they're not toxic, but they may have some unresolved trauma. They may have some unresolved unmet needs that they're trying to get met through you and you're not going to be able to be the idealized parent they never got. Mm. And so they've learned conditioned responses to try to get their needs met, whether it's positive or perceivably negative. And they have patterns they have developed as self-protective patterns that they can then transfer onto you and tag you with some of their unmet wounds. And so you end up being with this person and feel like, I was fine two minutes ago, and now I feel <laughs> icky. I just feel like I got, uh, I can't shake it. It's yeah. because you got tagged with their stuff. You got <laughs> tagged with their unmet needs. And you're like, why is this my problem? How am I supposed to fix your, I don't even know. I was, we were okay, and now we're not. And so one of the things, I worked an immense amount of time on this because we all have unmet needs, and we're looking to get the needs met. And don't realize everybody's got their unmet needs and they're not going to be able to meet the, your unmet needs. And mm. so we work on being able to say, it's not okay to talk to me like that and how to handle that and how to have those conversations and limiting exposure, if possible, to those folks, because typically those folks are stuck and you, like you said, you can't control getting them unstuck. You have to nurture yourself and be okay with saying it's not okay to treat me that way. And a lot of times there's fear based on that because people don't respond well. And then they say, well, that didn't go well. I said, well, they're not, this is for you, <laughs> not them. Yeah. They're not suddenly going to go, I'm sorry. You know, so the people just, it, they have a hard time owning Right, their behaviors and how they're showing up. So, they oftentimes oh, I, blame. I didn't realize I was over idealizing you. My apologies. That, that, exactly. That's very rare, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> no, yes. That's what they'll say. I set the boundary and they didn't respond well. I'm like, yeah, because they're defended. Yeah. They're protect. They are defended. They're not going to. That's too scary for them to to own that. Very interesting. And, and I see all kinds of possibilities in business with working with certain prospects, working with certain clients. Maybe it's time for us to evaluate our current relationships. Maybe it's time for us to create a new avatar of who it is that we want to work with, who is the ideal prospect and working through avoidance in uh, in sales conversations and client conversations. Lots of different ways that we can apply this to our business as well as to our life. So, Kristen, you've got some really exciting uh, ideas, and I'm sure that you've got some things that you're working on right now. Um, what are you what's going on that you'd like to share with us? I would love to share the Close the Chapter podcast. I dive into more subjects like these and really go into more depth on how to handle these types of situations, because I think when we equip ourselves with information and we learn how to communicate, we learn how to handle those situ situations and to do our own work and handle our own triggers, we're more successful in all our relationships, in leadership, 
and sales and marketing, it transcends all and also with our children and our partners. So that that's really my heart at this point is getting that information out there. I also on my website have a free five day journal that people can start to take the steps to working on some of the deeper work to close the chapter on what does it serve them and open the door again to making some change and having some more freedom in their life. And it's available on Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-D, um, Boyce, B-O-I-C-E dot com. And you can just put your email in there and it's free and it'll be delivered to your inbox. Awesome. So you can start the journey. Exciting. So that's KristenDBoys.com, and we'll have that link up on the Rebelpreneur website as well. Kristen, this has really been eye-opening, and I can't wait to begin to notice the next time I get triggered so that I can start putting some of this into practice. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to leave us with? Absolutely. I think the main piece that I hear from clients that come in, because it's scary to go in and talk to somebody is there like, is it too late? Is it too late? Am I, have I done too much damage or is it too late for me to make a change? And I want to say it's never, ever, ever too late. It begins by awareness and taking ownership of your own thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And you can transform your life. It is absolutely possible. So that's what I want to instill. That is very encouraging and very motivating. Thank you so much. Kristen Dale Boyce is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She owns a private counseling practice, Pathways to Healing, and she is the host of the Close the Chapter podcast. You can find out more and connect with her at KristenDBoyce.com. Kristen, it's been a real pleasure to have you on Rebelpreneur Radio today. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an honor. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.